All right, everybody, uh, good morning, and it's 9.20, so we have RSA Security uh, Fraud Action Research Labs on the phone, and we have uh, Lamor Kesem on the phone. And, of course, Lamor is coming to us from Israel, so uh, I don't know what time it is over there. Um, Lamor, good morning, and how are you? Hey. Good. How are you doing? Uh, not bad. So we've got a number of different things that you've put on the agenda for this week uh, to discuss. And one of those, of course, is uh, what are exploit kits? And that's that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good start. When we were, uh, I was a professor at a university uh, out of Long Island a while back, and we used to go over this quite extensively. So why don't you why don't you start it off, and let's see where we go. Okay, great, Joe. So what I was going to tell you uh, about today is what are exploit kits? Of course, just a, a really general idea. How does one get exploited, like when you're just browsing the Internet? How does it happen? And, of course, it results in Trojan infections a lot of times, and what to do against uh, this type of threat. So um, I'll start with uh, what these exploit kits are. They are toolkits that fraudsters and cyber criminals use to automate the exploitation of client-side vulnerabilities, uh, zero-day vulnerabilities, which means that uh, they are unpatched uh, vulnerabilities in a code, in a program, application, in the browser, Java, PDF, could be many different things. And uh, uh, the patch is, of course, not yet recognized by the person who's supposed to patch it or by the company who's supposed to patch it. And this is what cyber criminals are looking for. They're looking for a little loophole to be able to exploit and to take advantage of a system flaw. So what they're doing most of the time, they're targeting browsers and programs uh, that they can uh, later inject code into and take control of the machine. They want to take control of users' PCs, whether it be just to execute commands, and of course they want to get to the point that they can get as much command of a, of a remote PC as they can. <clears throat> so some of the exploit kits actually offer very limited control, and there are different ones that open a back door and can download payloads into the computer later on, which are malware, trojans, etc. Uh, and these exploit kits, like you were saying, you have already taught about. You were a professor when you taught about this. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, okay. pre-pending and a-pending code, and um, a, a lot of different things that go into this. Yes. Yeah. So we're talking about the the exploit kits that are being sold out there by fraudsters, and nowadays they don't even have to be too savvy with code. They just buy this. It's like a nice user interface they can use. They can most of the time choose whether they want to look at it in English or in Russian. They can get it for free, but then they don't get a really good one. They can grab one for $150, which is, for example, the MPAC. It's a very known kit. Or they can go for the really good one, which they pay $1,500 for use for a year for the black hole kit, which is also Russian-made. So, as you can see, imported goods cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, you know, it sounds like the Cadillac the of uh, malware. Exploited. It's actually very easy. They just have to land on... on sorry? No, it, it, I was just I was just saying it sounds like uh, you know it could be the Cadillac uh, of, of all malware out there at fifteen hundred dollars a pop. Did you hear me? Up. Oh, did we lose uh, Lamar? Oh, we might have lost her. So uh, let me just stop the recording.